Hello, my name is Maureen Murphy and I'm joined today with uh, Simon Hunter from Hunter's Apparel for this IoT Business Bite. Now today's session we're going to focus on just the experience of, of Simon and how he's grown the business and indeed more interestingly potentially how he's actually grown and developed the board um, since he joined uh, in 20, since he became MD, apologies, in 2010 having joined uh, the company, the family firm back in 1997. So say Hunters is a family business and uh, Simon is actually a third generation um, chief executive of the company, grown really from manufacture of shirts I believe, in the first instance with your grandfather, to the point now where the, the company's got quite a broad range of services, looking at the design and manufacture of corporate wear, workwear and uh, PPE and um, clothing. And really, quite interestingly, it's all underpinned by quite a sophisticated web-based workflow management system, which I think really sets the company apart from other organisations, um, manufacturing organisations, where they're able to deliver one-to-one -one services almost to individuals, um, giving them their hunter packs, as I believe they're called, um, right to, to the point of need. So, welcome, Simon. Thank you. So, maybe we just start off. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Simon. Um, so, I'm <coughs> 44 years old. I have a young family, uh, two boys, uh, Jude and Noah, and uh, they're great fun. Uh, a wife, Roisin, uh, who works with me. She's our uh, head of finance and administration, and uh, that's, that's been quite an important part of our company's evolution. Uh, she's very good at her job and uh, a valued member of our senior management team. Uh, she's been a shareholder actually since last year. Um, so we uh, uh, spend a lot of time at home at the weekends with me cooking. Uh, I'm definitely the best cook in the family. Oh, uh, you like to say that? <laughs> I yeah. do. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I enjoy that. I enjoy the, the focus and, and, and the relaxation that I feel when I'm, when I'm intensely involved in cooking something. You know, I, I love entertaining people and trying to make something nice. Uh, I, I am a very keen boxer. Uh, again, it's a little bit like cooking. Uh, when, you're, when, you're, when you're in the zone, you're in the zone and you can't be thinking about other things, so it's mm -hmm. very distracting and relaxing. Are you actually um, in the ring? Or are you watching? When you uh, say you're into your boxing. Uh, no, uh, yeah, I, I train and spar. Uh, um. And uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge avid reader. And again, same sort of thing when I'm, when I'm doing that, I feel very relaxed and the world could be falling down around me in, in the house if I've got my favourite newspaper uh, or book, I'm a very happy man. So, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I work hard, but I can relax as well. Fantastic. Probably good attributes now for the type of business that you're in. So maybe just thinking about Hunters then, maybe just give us a bit of a background on your, your journey from probably from the cradle. Right through to when you joined, I believe in '97, to where you are actually now. Um, well, the company sort of has, has I suppose, been known historically um, uh, for for the background and shirts. And um, I suppose when I came into the company in '97, um, it struck me quite early on that really it wasn't a viable strategy for the company to continue as a sort of a single product category specialist. Um, I, I didn't believe in that strategy and I, I felt keenly aware that we needed to you know, broaden the portfolio of products so that we could offer more of a holistic kind of uh, service to the client and um, you know through the early part of my career I was very instrumental in bringing new products on board and um, getting known for the ability to, to provide all of the products that our client base needed um, and from doing that it became obvious that, that we needed to make a specialist service to complement this breadth of product mm -hmm. and that was where this sort of idea you know the web was just starting to take off and it was just kind of obvious to me that we should somehow wrap up what we did from a product perspective into a, a parcel of services so to speak and that's what we did and Hunter Pack was born um, where we deliver very personalized deliveries um, to individuals at their, at their place of work, uh, giving them, you know, not just apparel these days, but also accessories and effectively whatever they need to start work on mm -hmm. day one, uh, delivered to the point of need. And uh, we've really 
sort of grown the portfolio of value added services from that and around that the whole case uh, to the point now where we offer sort of track, trace, repair, and laundry services that are that provide sort of a, a duty of care audit trail for complex PPE products and so forth. And that's really who we are today and what we specialize in today, these very significant value added services through the use of technology. And really it's helping you get some quite significant contracts. Um, but in terms of, say, the governance of the firm then, of the company, so I believe you joined as a director, or you became a director in 2001. Tell us a little bit about how the board was made up at that point, or even how it's developed in the intervening years. Um, well, I suppose we were quite typical of a lot of Northern Irish family-owned companies, you know, pretty informal management of the company. Um, we, you know, in many ways, were kind of not really directors, we were sort of more managerial in our approach. Um, we, you know, were very hands-on, and you know, we got a lot of things right, but we, we, we were prob probably lacking a little bit in sort of structured governance. And um, when I became, as it was then, MD, you know, I, I was very consciously aware that we needed to take our policies, procedures, handbooks, and so forth, chuck them in the bin, clean start and uh, you know we brought in a consultant to give us some help and we, we, we will re rebuild everything from a public mm -hmm. governance perspective. Could you give us a little bit of a history on um, really the governance of, of the company moving you know um, starting you know the early days the board how was that made up how, how was the, the company run really? Okay uh, well we, we did have non-execs, non-family non-execs uh, back in time uh, and when I became part of the board that would have been the case. Uh, my father uh, was the uh, chair for a time, then we had a non-exec chair for a time, and when I came on board, uh, we uh, were already in quite a significant growth phase. as we were growing by about 20-25% a year mm -hmm. organically. Um, and that's when you joined in the sales role? Well, I, I had always been in the sales role, uh, in fact I was pretty much the only sales, uh, sales person, <laughs> actually just my, my job title changed. <laughs> Uh, under by the, by the year. Yeah, yeah love, love that. Uh, and uh, so the business had been growing quite strongly and um, I suppose we were like a lot of businesses at, at that time, sort of, you know, pre Lehman Brothers time frame, we were starting to think, you know, how do we grow this thing more aggressively and uh, we decided that we would uh, go outside the sort of traditional organic growth that we had been on and we purchased a, a, an organisation in uh, Birmingham mm -hmm. and that, that turned out to not quite go as planned, you know, looking back, you know, retrospect's a wonderful thing, uh, you know, probably a little bit better due diligence should have been done, a um, bit better strategic planning um, could have been done and so forth. And um, the company having had a, a, a sort of a long period of, of 70 plus years of, of very successful trading, uh, got into a really difficult phase and um, the company uh, really needed to be restructured. Uh, the board needed to be restructured and to cut a very long story short, we basically um, went through a number of phases, one of which was that I became the managing director at that time and uh, secondly we um, basically reduced the board back to a purely family board to restore stability to the company and um, that worked. Um, after about 18 months of that process having been uh, embedded, the company uh, became profitable again uh, and uh, you know, a year later from that, profits were getting stronger mm -hmm. and stronger the year after that. So it was the right thing to do at that time um, and the results showed that. Um, but it was never the long term plan to mm -hmm. just have a family orientated board. I had started to feel about and look at the job director route and so forth and as soon as I got onto that sort of route I, I knew that uh, we needed to change the board again mm -hmm. uh, in a different way. I mean I suppose that's it's so important to bring the other board members with you along that journey. Was there anything in particular that you thought um, or any sort of strategies that you put in place to, to, to get that buy-in from the other board members because it's quite a radical move in terms of where you are now and maybe you, you could just give us a little bit of background on that. Well, you've now got a chair who is a non-exec director who is a chair yeah. and indeed is also a shareholder. Mm -hmm. um, well, there, there were a lot of things that were important to me. Um, 
I didn't want to rush, I wanted to take my time and I wanted to get the right person. So, you know, I thought about what would really add value. And, you know, I, I knew I wanted somebody who was plain and simple smarter than me, that I could respect, that was bringing something to the table that none of us had. And, um, um, you know, that could perhaps think bigger than the company had traditionally done. And, you know, we, we, we found somebody, there was a certain amount of serendipity in, in, in finding the, the guy that we, that we went with, a fellow called Corey Canavan, who has an OBE for services to technology. Uh, he's a pretty awesome businessman, and uh, he had been a mentor for me in an in a investor with our own business growth scheme uh, that I've been part of. And, you know, he, he is a game-changing event for the company in so, so many ways. Let me just expand on that. You know, how, how has the game changed? You know, with with, with Berg on on board. Um, well, I've I've heard a lot of people talk about the role of CEO has been quite a lonely role. So, um, on a personal level, it's fantastic having a mentor. You know, there at the end of the phone, at the end of an email, mm -hmm. um, prepared to be responsive, and and uh, I suppose particularly maybe because of the fact that he's a shareholder and has skin in the game, mm -hmm. you know, that he understands and wants the company to develop just as much as I do. And, um, um, you know, he knows that I'm very strongly ambitious and a driven person. And uh, I suppose what he helps do is he helps me focus on what's really important. Um, and although we had a sort of a strategic pathway, uh, in the organisation and had a structured strategic plan, he has encouraged the board uh, and myself to, to really focus on the things that are very important. Mm -hmm. um, and I suppose our emphasis has somewhat changed in that we are now very strongly oriented towards very technical products and very technical technology oriented services. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know this, this really helps us distinguish ourselves in the marketplace. Uh, so that's quite important. And what came first? Was it your vision to go down the technical route and then Perth's expertise? Um, so it, was it just a, it was a merging really of, as you say, a serendipitous merging really of, of like minds? Um, well, he, when he mentored me, um, he, I think, thought it was curious that, a, that an SME uh, in Northern Ireland was building its own technology to run the business. Mm -hmm. That's not normal, and he thought it was curious and interesting, and um, um, it was very important to me that we did this because I just could not see the point in trying to bring a service-oriented uh, business to the marketplace using a product that had been bought off the shelf and therefore could be the same product owned by umpteen of my competitors. It just seemed pointless to me. Um, so I knew that I wanted to distinguish the company through the way we serviced them and through the way we operated and how else would we do this if we didn't, you know, really take a very customised approach to building the technology. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we did. So, so talk us through the process then, from first introductions to, to the other members of the board to, to actually where he is now actually as chair of the board. Um, okay, so we, we, we had our we had our board without conversations. Mm -hmm. Uh we, we brought him in. And uh, I, th I think it's fair to say that absolutely everybody uh, uh, was was bought in immediately. To mm -hmm. be to be honest, I, I I would say people probably made their mind up in the first five ten seconds. Actually, you know he 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 uh, he's just such a, a likable individual mm -hmm. in the first instance, and um, uh, you know probably you know aside from all his sort of academic business background, he's good fun to be around. You know, so it's really important, which is hugely yeah. important, <laughs> and that was massively important for me, um, particularly, and um, so, you know, I mean, everybody liked him, uh, he talked a bit about his background and so forth, which is hugely impressive uh, uh, for, for anyone to hear, and, um, you know, it, it, it really then was a case of, we, we, we had an informal lunch with him and so forth and his wife, and uh, that, that all went terribly well, and uh, really that was sort of our way of interviewing him. Um, and, um, you know, he already knew pretty much what he needed to know about the business. I had obviously uh, furnished with him with the necessary documentation uh, that he would need to, you know... For his due diligence? Yeah, for his, his reassurance and yeah. so forth. 
And then I got into the to, to the to the bit that I sort of uh, really wasn't too sure if I was going to deal with. Uh, Porig uh, has been very successful in his uh, business life, and um, you know wasn't particularly in need of more money. Um, he uh, was, however, interested in having a shareholding in the company, mm -hmm. uh, which was a which, which was a big deal for uh, family a business, family yeah. business, right? And um, you know, I suppose particularly a family business that in its third generation and so forth, and all of all of the shareholders were family, and um, and had always been, uh, and you know, but it, it really did make sense, you know, um, him having skin in the game, you know, brought real buy-in, mm -hmm. and um, allows him to see things through ownership eyes, and yeah. that's. That's, um, that's a big deal, and um, I suppose what really impressed me in terms of my fellow directors, who who, who uh, in, in the manner of my parents, uh, was that they, they were they were really open to it. I think in no small part because of what their reaction to him was, mm -hmm. um, and um, you know that 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 was that was a smart thing for us to do to. To take that leap of faith and say, okay, well, yes, I mean, culturally, that this is not what we would do normally, yeah. um, but this is an extraordinary person here, and we want him to be part of this. And if this is what's going to make it interesting and more fun for him, then we should definitely do it. And, and so we took a leap of faith, and uh, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a part owner in the business now. So if you were to give a piece of advice to someone who's considering bringing on a non-exec, you know, yeah. onto the board for the first time, whether it's a family business, um, or otherwise, what, what piece of advice would you give them? Um, you know, think long and hard before you make a decision. Um, make sure that you've got a clear list of criteria that, that will change the business for the better, that will add value. Um, it's, it's, it's a really good idea to bring somebody to the table who's not kind of linked to anybody at the table, you know, who brings real independence. Um, and you know, bring somebody to the table who's better than everybody who's at the table already. Nice. You know, uh, because otherwise, why bother? And um, you know, if you're lucky enough to get somebody who can do all that for you, it, it can be genuinely transformative. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, Sam. Thank you.